نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد بسم الله. Today we will continue from ayat number fifty-seven of Surah Waqiyah. عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. نحن خلقناكم فلولا تصدقون. We have created you, so why do you not believe? أفرأيتم ما تمنون. Have you seen that which you emit? أأنتم تخلقونه أم نحن الخالقون Is it you who creates it or are we the creator? Allah Taala reminds us of his power to create a complete human being from a drop of semen. He acknowledges the initial act of procreation through cohabitation of a man and a woman but also highlights that neither of them actually plays any role in nurturing the embryo in mother's womb through all the stages of growth to the birth of a newborn. A semen drop becomes a blood clot, which then forms a lump of flesh. This flesh gives rise to bones covered by muscles, and then the body develops multiple organ systems like digestive system, respiratory, and circulatory systems. All these miraculous transformations are completely handled by Allah Neither father nor mother have any influence on how fetus gradually develops inside the womb. نَحْنُ قَدَّرْنَا بَيْنَكُمُ الْمَوْتَ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُوقِينَ We have decreed death among you and we are not to be outdone. So the word بِمَسْبُوقِينَ means بِمَغْلُوبِينَ عَاجِزِينَ Defeated, incapable, powerless. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be defeated in his plan that every creation sees death. على أن نبدل أمثالكم ونشيكم في ما لا تعلمون in that we will change your likeness and produce you in that form which you do not know. Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions the amazing creation of humans in the previous verses out of his unique power to transform a drop of semen and then he points out the ultimate reality that death is inevitable as decreed by him. And his command cannot be overturned. Allah SWT reminds us of his jurisdiction, his control, his dominion over replacing us with another nation and even converting humans into another form similar to what he has done in the past where people became pigs and monkeys due to their disobedience and subsequent punishment. This may sound too unrealistic to our logical minds today. How can humans be molded into another form? But when you look at the fascinating process of a cell developing into a baby, a seed into a tree, a flower into a fruit, a larvae into an insect, it gives us an understanding of Allah's power and control. Nothing is beyond the power of Allah Ta'ala, whether our minds can comprehend or not, and whether science can explain it or not. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشَّةَ الْأُولَىٰ فَلَوْلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ And you have already known the first creation. So will you not remember? The word anasha means creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the same topic in a few different verses in Surah Rum, ayat number 27. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ And it is he who begins creation. Then he repeats it. And that is even easier for him. In Surah Maryam, ayat number 67, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Does man not remember that we created him before while he was nothing? Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the three key necessities of human life, food, water, and fire, as part of his bounties to us. أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَحْخُونَ أَأَنْتُ تَزْرَعُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الزَّارِعُونَ لَوْ نَشَاءُ لَجَعَلْنَاهُ حُطَامًا فَظَلْتُمْ تَفَكَّهُونَ إِنَّا لَمُغْرَمُونَ بَلْ نَحْنُ مَحْرُومُونَ And have you seen that seed which you sow? Is it you who makes it grow or are we the grower? If we willed, we could make it dry debris and you would remain in wonder saying, indeed, we are now in debt. Rather, we have been deprived. So the word hupama means hashiman, 
la yuntafa'u bihi so dry broken hay that is not usable Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points to the crops and reminds us that we as humans do very little in growing crops we prepare the land and sow the seed and later on cultivate it but it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who germinates the seed into plants and without this essential step all other efforts are fruitless even beyond the initial germination it is Allah who nurtures that seedling into a plant through a balance between water and sun if he subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds rain or the sunlight the entire crop would wither and in such circumstances the farmer has no recourse no way to reverse the loss he would only be left to utter words of remorse and grief فَرَأَيْتُمُ الْمَاءَ الَّذِي تَشْرَبُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ أَنْزَلْتُمُوهُ مِنَ الْمُزْنِ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْمُنْزِلُونَ لَوْ نَشَاءُ جَعَلْنَاهُ أُجَاجًا فَلَوْ لَا تَشْكُرُونَ And have you seen the water that you drink? Is it you who brought it down from the clouds or is it we who bring it down? If we willed, we could make it bitter. So why are you not grateful? So the word al-muzn means clouds and ujajan is referring to bitter. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in these verses of the blessing of water. It is a necessity of life. It is not only important for our crops and our animals, but human life depends on water. On an average, a person cannot live more than three days without water. And we find that there are three primary sources of water on earth, rain water, ground water, and surface water. None of them are in control of human beings. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his blessings of producing rain from clouds and actions that humans have no control over. In recent times, some countries use the method of cloud seeding to encourage rain, but it is still an imperfect science. Another source of water is surface water, like oceans, rivers, and lakes, Again, at best, humans can re-channel the water, but not really generate new sources of surface water. And finally, the groundwater, like wells and springs, which we tap into to fetch water, we have no control over increasing water flowing through them either. In Surah Mulk, ayat number 30, Allah says, Say, if all your water were to sink away, who then can supply you with flowing water? So Allah if he makes the surface of the water lower than what it is today, you can't even drill and bore into uh, ground and create your wells. Then what can you do? You are helpless. Another bounty of Allah SWT hinted in this verse is that he made the water sweet and drinkable. Humans cannot drink saline water. Imagine, if all water available to us was bitter, how much hardship it would be to make it consumable. Today, many countries use a technology called reverse osmosis to desalinate water, but it remains a very inefficient process. Only when you learn about how difficult and costly it is to desalinate water that you probably appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing and bounty in making fresh water available to us abundantly in nature. الحمد لله أفرأيتم النار التي تورون أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نحن المنشئون نحن جعلناها تذكرة ومتاعا للمقوين فصبح باسم ربك العظيم And have you seen the fire that you ignite? Is it you who produce its tree or are we the producer? We have made it a reminder and provision for the travelers. The third necessity of life Allah SWT reminds us of is fire. Indeed, fire is a necessity. Allah SWT mentions tree as a source to produce fire, but you can extend your imagination to all other fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, which Allah SWT has provided for us to generate fire. Do we have any control over increasing the production of fossil fuel? If you follow the research on alternative energy sources, you understand why the world is desperately looking for solutions like nuclear plants and electric cars to avoid depletion of fossil fuels. The word muqeen is derived from iqwa, 
which comes from the root word Ewa and means barren land or desert. Allah mentioned the use of fire in deserts by travelers to keep themselves warm at night. And scholars say that it includes all people who prepare food by cooking on fire. So we are all dependent on fire, whether this is a specific example as Mata mentioned here, but a traveler in desert or just you know a person living in city or any other place of the world. So exalt the name of your Lord, the most great, with all these blessings and examples of Allah's superior power and man's dependency and helplessness, there is no other expression more suitable than proclaiming the greatness of our Lord Allah and expressing gratitude to Him. Then I swear by the setting of the stars. Notice that in the verse, there is the negation particle La, but it is not translated. So there are two explanations given when there is an oath preceded by the particle la. Because if you do the literal meaning, it will mean la uqsimu, I do not take oath. But that's not what is intended with such statement. So the two explanations are that la is zayda, meaning additional, and carries no meaning. Another explanation is that la is to refute an argument followed by the correct view. So the word would mean singular word would be mawqa. And that means setting point of stars. Allah takes an oath on the setting point of stars and then he says and indeed it is an oath if you could know most great. So we may not appreciate what's so grandiose about a setting point of star. And Allah then brings a verse just to emphasize that if you knew what it meant, you would appreciate why taking an oath of the setting point of star has value. So taking an oath on the setting point of stars signifies their perishability and highlights divine power. Because if a star sets, which means it goes away from our sight, yeah, and that is something that it cannot control. Allah SWT had made it go into its orbit and it has no power upon itself. Similarly, we have no power upon anything around us either. Allah SWT emphasizes the greatness of his oath in this verse that if you could imagine the magnitude of this oath, you would understand how important is the purpose of this oath, which will come in the next verse. Indeed, the whole cosmic system including our galaxy and solar system, are a huge sign of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala's power. The motion of stars and their orbits, their setting and rising, have lessons for us to appreciate the intricate creation and physical laws that govern them. These heavenly bodies operate so perfectly and obey Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala's command so precisely that the whole system has been running seamlessly for millions of years. In Nahul Quran Karim, Indeed, it is a noble Qur'an. This is the Jawab al-Qasim. And this is why Allah SWT took that great oath upon the setting of the stars. This refutes the claim of pagans that Qur'an had been authored by a human or a speech inspired by the devil. So now you may understand the la uqsimu, one explanation is that no, you think that Qur'an was authored by a human, by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you think it was a speech inspired by the devil. No, that is not the case. And this is the truth. Indeed, it is a noble Quran. Allah says in Surah Najm, ayat number three and four, nor does he speak about Prophet Allah says, nor does he speak from his own inclination. And it, the Quran, is not but a revelation revealed. And then in Surah Shu'ara, ayat number 210 and 211, Allah says, And the devils have not brought down the revelation. It is not allowable for them, nor would they be able to. In a well-protected book. So the word maknun means hidden, protected. 
And Kitabun Makmun here is referring to Lahi Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. None touch it except the purified. There are a couple of things to focus on in this verse. First, what is being referred to with the Hu Zamir? So, you know, the Hu Zamir is pointing to what? Uh, scholars say that it could refer to Lahim Afuz or it could refer to Quran. The second point to ponder is who are being referred to as Mutaharun? Some say it means angels because they don't commit any sins. And others say it means anyone without major and minor impurity. So the meaning of the verse becomes either that only angels are able to touch Lahim Afuz and this is figuratively speaking, because it's not about physical touch to Lohim Afuz, rather they are aware of its contents. That's the first meaning. The other meaning could be that the script of Quran is touched only with wudu or tayammum or ghusl and not in the state of Janaba. So Mutaharun um, is referring to uh, people who are in the state of either wudu, tayammum or ghusl and not in the state of Janaba. With regards to touching Quran, Let's keep in mind a few key rulings. If Quran is in a cover that is permanently attached or sewn with it, then it is not permitted to touch even the cover without wudu. Also, a person cannot use part of the garment he's wearing to touch Quran, like sleeves or shirt, etc. So use a handkerchief or some other sheet. Scholars say even to avoid taking a tissue to touch Quran, since you then throw away that uh, tissue in garbage. So that's not appropriate. Something that has touched Quran would end up in the garbage. So these rulings were about the touching of Quran, but keep in mind, you can actually recite Quran without having wudu, as long as you're not in Janaba. Tanzilun Rabbil Alameen It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. Afabihadil hadithi antum mudhinun then is it to this statement that you are indifferent? The word mudhinun means mutahawinun aw mukadribun, negligent or denier. This word mudhinun is being used for people who are relaxed, not serious, careless with respect to the rulings of Quran. And make the thanks for your provision that you deny the provider, meaning Instead of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his favors, you show your gratitude by denying him. Narrated by Zayd bin Khalid ta'ala anhu in Bukhari, Nabi Sallallahu said, Hal tadruna madha qala rabbukum? Qalu Allahu wa rasuluhu alam. Qala, asfaha min ibadi mu'minun bi wa kafiru. Fa'amma man qala mutirna bi fadlillahi wa rahmatihi, wa thalika mu'min bi kafirun bil kawkab. Wa'amma man qala bi nawi kada wa kada, do you know what your Lord has said? They replied, Allah and his apostle know better. The Prophet said, Allah says, in this morning, some of my worshippers remained as true believers and some became non-believers. He who said that it had rained with the blessing and mercy of Allah is the one who believes in me and does not believe in the star. But he who said it had rained because of such and such a star is a disbeliever in me and a believer in the star. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is pointing out, and this hadith is also describing the situation where when we get bounty, when we get any favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is you know, getting a, a child in our family or getting a new job or anything that excites us, you know, let's say earning you know, a good bonus, whatever it might be, something that uh, comes to us as a fear of Allah Ta'ala. And then we start inferring. We start thinking maybe because I did some action, that's what caused it. Because I worked hard this year, that's why I've got extra money. Because I had such a, a good degree, I got my job. You know, because I was taking care of the health of myself and my family, you know, we got such, and I remained fit. I got such a, you know, a blessing of a baby. If this is the reasoning where we link everything to the material uh, cause, then you know uh, we are misguided in our thinking. We should really be referring back to the favor, the blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that He had granted us, and and be thankful to Him.
فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُونَ وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذَيْنْ تَنْظُرُونَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ تَرْجِعُونَهَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Then why, when the soul at death reaches the throat, and you are at that time looking on, and our angels are nearer to him than you, but you do not see, then why do you not, if you are not to be recompensed, bring it back, if you should be truthful? The word al means the throat. And when Aswat says, meaning we are near him through our knowledge and our angels. And the غير مدينين means غير مبعوثين ولا محاسبين ومجازين Not raised again. So do you consider that you will not be raised again, not taken account, not rewarded or punished of your uh, deeds? These verses are emphasizing the weak nature of humans. They show the complete lack of control a person has for his death. It is as if Allah SWT is saying that if you are so sure that your only life is what you have in this world and that there is no day of resurrection, then definitely you do not want to leave this world. You want to remain alive forever. So try it. Try to save your life. And let's give you even an easier task. When you're sick yourself, you're weak, let alone you know, a near-death experience, so saving yourself will be difficult in this less healthy state. Why don't you then try to save one of your beloved ones? from death with your full power and capability. Of course, you cannot. As far as says in Surah Qiyamah, ayat number 26 and 27, Kalla, idha wa qila man raq. No, when the soul has reached the collarbones and it is said, who will cure him? Brothers, let's not take this matter lightly. When the time of death comes, it cannot be averted. The health that we have today, the wealth that we have today, the time that we spend today, the opportunity that is available today, none of these will be at our disposal when death comes. Our day-to-day experiences are full of events that remind us of this reality. Just the other day, one of our family friends attended a wedding ceremony. No history of chronic disease, no symptoms of frail health. A jolly fellow giving an entertaining company to people around him goes home and a couple of hours later passes away during sleep. That is it. Life was over for him. All doors of actions closed, just like that. Narrated by Anas bin Malik, said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا اسْتَعْمَلَهُ فَقِيلَ كَيْفَ يَسْتَعْمِلُهُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ قَالَ يُوَفِّقُهُ لِعَمَلٍ صَالِحٍ قَبْلَ مْلَوْتِ When Allah SWT wills goodness for a servant, He puts him into action. It was said, how does He put him into action, O Messenger of Allah? He said he is guided to righteous deed before death. We make dua, Allahumma inna nas'aluka jannah wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa na'awudhu bika min nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. Allahumma tawaffana muslimin wa ahdina muslimin wa alhaqna bis salihin wa ghayra khazaya wa la maktunin. Allahumma ahsin aqibatana fi al-umur kulliha wa ajinna min khiz dunya wa adab al-akhirah. آمين. فأما إن كان من المقربين فروح وريحان وجنة نعيم. And if the deceased was of those brought near to Allah, then for him is rest and bounty and a garden of pleasure. So روح and the word ريحان means mercy, rest. Provision, joy, happiness, delight, many, many meanings, all in the sense of pleasure. And from this ayat onwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually describing the conditions of the three groups that were mentioned earlier on in the surah. So we had the three groups, Muqabibin, Ashabul Yameen, and Ashabul Shiman. So the first one are the group of Muqarabin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as this is a group that will have rest and bounty and pleasure and Jannah. And then the second group, And if 
he was of the companions of the right, then the angels will say, peace for you. You are from the companions of the right. But if he was of the deniers who were astray, then for him is the accommodation of boiling water and burning in hellfire. Indeed, this is the true certainty. So glorify the name of your Lord, the Most Great. It is narrated by Jabir Tala and Tirmidhi Nabi Salaam said, Man qala subhanallah al-azim wa bihamdihi warisad lahu nakhlatun fil jannah. Whoever says, Glory is to Allah the Magnificent, and with His praise, Subhanallah and Azim, for Bihamdihi, a dead palm tree is planted for Him in paradise. Another narration about the um, importance, the benefits of this kalima to say Tasbih Allah Subhanahu wa Taala comes in Muslim, narrated by Abu Huraira Taala Anhu. Nabi Sallallahu said, "Kalimatani khafifatan ala lisan." ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ Two are the expressions which are light on the tongue but heavy in the scale, dear to the compassionate one. Those are سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ The summary of this is that we should do more and more tasbih of Asma'a Ta'ala, especially with these kalimat, سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ they um, grant great reward to us. And we want to meet Allah among the best of the people as muqarabin, inshallah, and at least as Ashab al-Yameen, and definitely not as Ashab al-Shaman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best ending, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best reward in the hereafter. I mean, let's quickly review Ayahs 83 to 96. No one can escape death or save anyone from their appointed end of life. The final state of three groups of people is described, which is Muqarabin, Ashab al and Ashab al And then we learn about the importance and benefits of Tasbih. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ وَتَوْعَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ